What's up? It's Slim Jones from SJ76 Gaming. It is April 1st, 2023, and we're about to learn the Cypher system. About to run a campaign just off the top of my head, put it all together this week, just to learn how to play the Cypher system. I've got four friends, and we're going to make characters today. Session zero. Let's go. Let's do it. Just waiting on the players. Hey, okay. Welcoming myself to you. No striker. Now all we're missing is all players are trickling in. The server is open. Project Aurora Dawn is go. All right, Jaikor and Crimson. Um, so Jaikor, you've already kind of figured out what you're gonna do. So I want to make them step by step in game. So yep. take what's your what was your type? He was a speaker. Speaker. And um, your descriptor descriptor is charming descriptors and focus um entertains now with that you can make all your stuff so full starting value it gives you that straight off. So the the type is basically what you want to start with, I think, when you're making your characters. And you get a six additional points to divide as you wish. And then, of course, everyone starts at first tier and explains all those other, th other things. Effort, edges. You, you kind of know what to do, so you can go ahead and do your, your sheet. All right. So there's only five types. Oh, sorry, four types. Warrior. Speaker, Explorer, and Adept. But as you see here with these um, suggested type tables, they give you an example of what like a warrior, a barbarian, blah, blah, blah might be. Right. And when it says flavored with whatever, those are the flavors that allow you to exchange type abilities. And the descriptor? What does it mean? Here, Here's a list of the descriptors. Oh. For for an, for an example, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a descriptive it's a descriptive um, word that you know defines your character and gives you skills and uh, bonuses to your pools and stuff. So oh. so you kind of need to have a concept of what you want to go for, but yeah. starting Let with the see. type is kind of the best because I know my type. Yep, here you go. Ah, thank you. And then once you figure it out, your descriptor and your focus. The layout of it is a descriptor type who focused. I don't know, pronoun, adverb, who verbs. I, I don't know, something <laughs> like that. It's the it's the layout. So Jicord, kind of explain what you're going for and how you're going about making your character. Playing a uh, late '60s up and coming wannabe rock star, but like the uh, psychedelic, like starting to get into the psychedelic hippie-ish stuff. Like his brain's been a little fried from too many shrooms and such, LSD, whatever he's been doing. Um, <laughs> but overall, he's a very charming speaker. Um, think guy like Austin Powers, like like yeah, baby. So that people like him a lot. His focus is basically he just wants everyone to have a good time. So he's an entertainer. So he's entertain. That's his focus. Very good. And because of all your charmingness and skills, you went speaker because he's talking a lot and he got the charming descriptor and who entertains. Yes, it all fits together. So see, you have the concept for the character and then all these options are pretty general. So you kind of just make it work for your, your own. Let yeah. me know oh. what you want to do, Crimson, and I will hand you your cards too and you can start. So XP, do we get any just you? to start or um not in this campaign since we're kind of okay, learning so that's, okay yeah, but just... in another campaign there are options to start with um you can start with xp for like penalties role-playing penalties and other things like that but xp is the currency of changing the story for you guys in game you can shut down my gm intrusions by spending experience you can re-roll any role even roles you don't make by spending an xp say jicor makes a roll and he fails and arcane's like oh fuck that i want you to re-roll he can spend an xp to do that you need to spend four XP on each of those um, five advancement options at the top of your character sheet. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20. And after that point, you're tier two and it resets. You got a list of all the skills? That's the thing about skills here. Let me give you this. Uh, it says I'm trained in initiative. 
Is that a skill? Yes. Oh, it, 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 would, it would turn it to the wrong and, one. And so where yeah. is it? Intellect, speed, or might? That you write it in. So, uh, in, um, initiative is speed. Oh. Sure. And it, so the thing about skills is there's not like a list of skills, but if you look at this chart up here above you, it is just like a list of ideas. Whatever you can think of might be a skill. Your pool is your stat, right? Yeah. So whatever your number is in that, yeah, that your pool needs to be the same because that's what you're pulling from in the game. And whenever you're, so whenever you take damage in the game, you're might pull takes the damage first if your might pull hit zero you click one of those buttons on the damage track and you become impaired and then it goes to your speed pull if your speed pull gets to um zero you become debilitated and uh you can't move really with your speed of zero and then if your intellect pool goes to zero then you're dead and there are th special damage and attacks that can target your other pools directly but for the most part it'll be might speed intellect for most of the time whenever someone's attacking you you're gonna make a speed defense roll because that's like moving out of the way and dodging and all this might defense rolls are more for constitution against poisons and stuff and i didn't have any attacks listed on anything i saw i didn't know if that was something i overlooked or so your light weapon that does two damage and because it's a light weapon it's an eased attack whatever the target number is it'll be one class lower for you hitting with that but you'll always be two, doing two damage unless you roll a 17 18 19 or 20 special rolls that modify the damage i'm using the, the hyperlinks in the friggin book and the pdf yeah yeah, oh, yeah, good. Smart. yeah I'll, I'll go do that as well if you guys need to do that too once you get it figured out if you need a quick reference i've got them in game too right. I, i'm getting the hang of it all uh now yeah good good so, any questions been... let me know banished to the shadow realm. oh what, what happened happened? happened go back <laughs> it was banished to the shadow realm <laughs> just as you said that <laughs> uh, i was just joking oh no did it delete everything you might have just rewind time. No, don't hit that button ever. <laughs> Did we rewind? Oh no! Ah oh, man! Oh fuck! Okay. Shit. Yeah, I'm gonna do it pencil and paper as well on the form here. Oh, is the entire thing bugged out? When I saved it, it saved it blank. Oh shit! Oh, no, it didn't save the actual like huh. i see it in the um hmm. preview of the saved object it's got stuff but then when i load it it's blank damn yeah damn i think it's probably the script i have to probably script it to be able to be saved well so much for all that pdfs all the way <laughs> all right well that's fine with me howdy hello okay. hello sorry about that time you showed up no <laughs> we have good. scale force winds out here and then tornadoes were touching down Oh gosh. Yeah, there's been lots of there's many fires. Yeah. No, it's more like a house sad. collapsed. I hope I didn't hold you guys up. No, no yeah, they just got their characters ready and uh yeah, you I just get, get yours as well. Oh, are we actually having a session tonight? <clears throat> I have stuff ready to get the players ready for session one. They basically oh. have their characters ready. Do you just get skills? I thought it was like just if you says you can do something. It tells you if you gotcha. get skills oh, yeah. or it's related to something. Okay, yeah. But yeah, you can it. you can use XP to get um skills in game. Oh, okay, okay. 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 Unless it's specifically how do you get a cipher? Is that a, Yeah, that is also an in game thing that is Okay, okay. Just curious because I'm just curious if I miss something and okay, but I don't have any, right? No, I don't think we do. Okay. All right. I'll be a vicious speaker. A vicious speaker who murders. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> God, who is this? Jack the Ripper. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. That sounds like a serial killer. So, um, if you look at the, the map on the table, this is a representation of distance and movement in combat. So, instead of specific ranges, it, there's immediate distance, short distance, long distance, and very long distance. Immediate distance is anything within 10 feet of you. Short distance is anything within 50 feet, but greater than 10. Long distance is within 100, but greater than 50. And then very long, yeah, 500 feet. 
You can so, uh, melee attack anyone within immediate distance. You can move an immediate distance and attack. So basically anyone within your immediate distance you can attack. As your action, you can do that. Or you could move a short distance as your action. And you can move a short distance and attack, but that's a speed task of 4, meaning you have to hit 12. And if you fail it, you basically stop. You stumble along the way and don't fully make it. And then you could also use your entire turn to move a long distance, which is 100 feet, but you have to make the speed task of four as well. So with movement, you can always move an immediate distance and attack, or you can move short. Otherwise, you got to make a speed task of four to move short and attack or move long. I have a question. I'm yeah. Fine some of that so in your theater of mind whenever we're doing stuff theater of the mind you just got to generalize oh he's within immediate distance oh it's a short distance long distance you know there's not uh, well because uh with the um i moves like the wind it has it says stuff like uh you move much further than than normal in a round this means this means that as uh, part of another action you can move up to a short distance Ex that see that right there that what yeah. i just said you can move an immediate distance and attack but with that you can move a short distance and attack so your character can move up to 50 feet and whack or if i cho just choose to uh, move it also says i can move up to a long distance yep i, I can move a long distance or up to 200 feet yep so it says it right there. Oh, okay. Uh, as a speed-based task with a difficulty of four. As I you said. Guys, it's really yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah. It says um, moves like the wind is his focus, so that makes yeah. sense. Flavor, is that just something you choose for your class? Or? So you trade out on a one-per-one -one basis an ability from your four tier abilities. Ah. And you can do that at each tier. Very so, cool. So, flexibility. All right. Exactly. Like if you you wanted okay. to be focused with cool. tech or okay. whatever like here over in the suggested types for modern and fantasy like warrior mage warrior flavored with magic and then um, technical professional explorer with skills and knowledge police officer explorer with combat flavor spy speaker with stealth flavor so you know just whatever your concept is you can throw the flavor in there to give it more without having to go full stealth or whatever it can just give you a little hint of that all right i need to step away but as i said 10 30 we will start with a little intro and then jai course character we begin the campaign of Aurora Dawn, our first foray into the Cypher system. In the year 2460 on the planet HD85512B, Aurora Dawn, an ancient alien device is discovered by the Galactic Federation. Scientists and engineers study the device, an arch embedded with six stones, and soon realize it's capable of altering space and time. Once activated, the stones disappeared. And let's make sure that we have the stones disappeared. Let me mark them out real quick on the thingy. The stones disappeared, causing the time-space continuum to become extremely unstable, threatening the future of the entire universe. The Horizon Initiative, a secretive agency specializing in advanced and alien technology, take control of the device and act quickly to recover the stones and bring balance to the time-space continuum. Four potential individuals are selected from the most stable timelines, and agents are sent to bring them to the present and convince them to aid the initiative in recovering the stones across time. Rightfully blaming the device for the chaos erupting across the universe, the Federation military and frightened citizens of Aurora Dawn are besieging the facility with the aim of destroying the device. Time is of the essence. Inside this natural cavern chamber with makeshift metal walls, and uh, electrical t cables tied up to this archway spewing with energy. A woman with a cybernetic eye is at the work on the main console. Four armored agents behind her looking back as the lights in the room are flashing red in certain areas. Ding, ding, an alarm sounding off. Two massive war droids stand with their guns pointed towards the entry the agents speak we don't have a lot of time the federation is coming in who could possibly help stabilize the the time space continuum i found four biogenetic signatures that match perfectly you need to go and get them now i'm setting up the routes she clicks away on the keyboard quickly 
Get in there, agents. Go. Uh, this is never going to work. Go now. We don't have any time. Time is of the essence. Dun, 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 dun. The agents line up one at a time. They look back. They're wearing like full black looking like spacesuits. And they've got devices with them of unknown, unknown use. And perhaps some kind of laser pistol thing. The first one turns around. Dr. Vega gives a thumbs up and he walks up disappearing disappearing through the portal wait for it she clicks away and in similar fashion each of them go in disappearing into the portal each after an individual series of clicks she begins modern monitoring the computer and awaiting their return. 11 a.m. Monday, August 18th, 1969. Bethel, New York. The festival known as Woodstock. Jimi Hendrix has just finished his set to a totally grooving, stoned and tripping crowd. In the stage, to the side, with a bunch of other artists, people smoking, uh, engineers, making sure the microphones are working, uh, amps are projecting, what security there is making sure things aren't too crazy. Who stands there preparing to go on stage as Jimi Hendrix is waving to the crowd and coming uh, towards you? He's still on stage. He's walking off towards uh, you, Jaikor. Tell us what your character looks like tell us all about him as he as you are preparing to put on a show for this the largest crowd you've ever seen uh, carrying his acoustic guitar in his hand is a uh, young man of a uh, bit of a um, bowl cut type deal going on and uh it's wearing his uh kind of like a business suit but it's like all funky colored as you can see on the token there but he's feeling a bit nervous after having a follow-on up Jimmy there but he thinks he's got this in hand I mean he just popped a bunch of shrooms behind stage and so like he's not even sure if this crowd is real at the moment it's like he's totally like, freaking out of his mind but he knows he must perform he must go on for the show but they depend upon him as you're getting your wits about you Jimmy Hendrix come out comes out with his ruffled shirt cool attitude sweating profusely a crazy crowd man Johnny you're gonna have a great time uh, I, I hope so man I don't know if I can follow that up but oh man Whoa. it ain't nothing yeah. but a thing man you just gotta groove with it he hands his guitar off to someone and he uh he takes a towel wipes his face and goes off some um early 70s looking women waiting to take him to join save him some the, save some of the scroopies for me man <laughs> he gives you the thumbs up as he as he as he doesn't even look he's just walking away with them um someone comes up he's got a clipboard yeah, he's kind of like uh johnny horton uh, uh, oh uh is that an uh, rick rickton johnny rickton uh was there a johnny rickton Yes, yeah, I'm here. All right, go on, get out there. The, J Jimmy's got him all primed up for you. Oh, man, man. John just walks on the stage and he just starts waving around. Woo! You can tell overall the uh, as you walk out and they can, you're bringing, uh, how, how do you look walking out as the uh, atmosphere? You can tell the crowd is getting louder. Peep ch cheering. This, this guy's head straight is holding his back straight like you know, just walking um just uh very proud looking this she's like waving um waving to like one of the girls as they, they toss their bra at him <laughs> he's <just walks laughs> the center of the stage <laughs> yes you you see several women fully bared kind kind of muddy kind of dirty but it, it is what it is and there's that that image is displayed all across for you but there's just so many 
You you yeah. can't put your eye to any individual thing sea too of long. Humanity, bro. The sea, if you, as I said, the largest crowd you've ever seen, but indeed a pleasurable moment, and people are giving you the pleasant vibes as it all starts to kick in. Yeah, all right, all right. So this is going to be the first roll of the yep. the game. So I have to determine the task difficulty of playing the song here. <laughs> so you have to follow Jimi Hendrix. I mean, there's a lot of pressure. Um, I'm going to say it's a task difficulty five. It's challenging. Even trained people often fail. Target number 15. But this is your opportunity to tell me what skills you have and uh, what things could possibly ease this role if you have all anything. Right. Oh. He's trained in all social skills except coercion. So, perform. <laughs> I like it. You ease the task by one. So, 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 for, so you've taken it from a five. You've ta made it less challenging to difficult because you are a very experienced. You're, you're confident. So now you have to roll a 12. Are you gonna use the dice roller, or I don't? I don't really care, since it's like oh. one roll. Yep. Okay. I'll I'll just watch. <laughs> oh. He <laughs> fumbled. That's too bad. Ah, ah. <laughs> um. Well, just to back up, you didn't. You, did you want to apply any effort? So if I apply effort, that. So you would have to use three points from your... Uh, do you have an edge in intellect? I do. I have a one. So you could use two points from your intellect pool, and um, that would uh, be a level of effort, and then that would ease it down to a, a nine, but you still would have failed. Yeah. Hard to follow up, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, combined with trying to follow Jimi Hendrix and maybe the mushrooms are having not the effect you wanted them to on your performance. And His nerves are just causing it to come, start to become a bad trip. Yeah, exactly. And the, the friendly women start to become very ugly and unfriendly women. <laughs> as uh, like Freaking out as like they're making boo sounds and <laughs> starts seeing like grotesque faces. The boo sounds <laughs> may or may not actually be happening, but your performance does suffer as people on the sides of the stage are starting to kind of, you know... But at the same time, many people are just so stoned and tripped out, they are just jamming to whatever. So, um, but the all of the tripping that's going on with you, it adds to even more confusion. As you see, a spaceman walk on stage. You, he's wearing like a black spacesuit. And uh, you see, like, a, a guy kind of come up and tap him on the shoulder, and he just spins around and chink, pulls the trigger on some kind of device in his hand, and the person, like, freezes up and falls over. The crowd is making strange, mixed, mixed reactions. Oh, it's the man, man. They're here to get me. Ah, I knew they were coming. Oh. As I do the first GM intrusion. I give you one experience point, and I will allow you to give the next. Ex so, so whenever I do an intrusion, I give you two experience points. One is for you, and then one is for you to give to the um, another player. So, one of the other three people here at the table, and I will let you do that as the as a matter of segueing into their sequence. But for right. for now, you have the one XP, and what is happening? It, you can't refuse this because you all have no XP. Yeah. But I guess whoever you give this to will have XP. So this could get interesting. We'll see what. We'll see what. We'll, we'll, it's fine. We play in the game. It's cool. So anyway, so, um, as my intrusion, the agent, the spaceman, walks on stage. People are not sure what's going on. Some dude's already kind of like stunned and laying over after trying to like put his hand on him. He comes up to you, and uh, he says, "You have to come with me." And he fires at you with the same weapon. And your heart rate elevates as you're not sure what the heck is going on. Because you, you actually feel it. 
It's not just a psychological trip. As something penetrates you, and both of you zoom, disappear from the stage in 1969. There's stories told about this from several f people at the festival. Most of them just chalked it up to another hallucination. <laughs> Johnny Johnny Rickton was never actually there at Woodstock. <laughs> but Jimi Hendrix swears that he saw Johnny go on stage. Anyway, very good. All right, so you have the one experience point, and you have another. Who will you gift it to and segue? I guess I throw it across the table to Crimson. Alrighty. The year is 946 before the common era. Before the birth of Christ. Out there in the sea, a young Perseus, pelted by the sun, splashed back and forth by the waves. There is land in sight as you're following the coast of Medusa's lair. Tell me how you are proceeding. <coughs> Tell me about what, what you look like. Go ahead and introduce yourself as you feel a sudden inspiration from the gods as you've been gifted an experience point. Uh, as Perseus uh, continues his journey in hopes to save his uh, mother from a uh, unwanted and forced upon marriage, uh, with plans of slaying Medusa to use her head as a uh, as a weapon. Uh, Perseus is sitting on his uh, large, large raft, meditating and uh, doing some uh, what's it called again? Mental mental fighting, whatever that's. I think that's what it's called, anyways. Uh, per perceiving, try, try to think of strategies to uh, slay a Gorgon. With he's heard he's heard the stories of he's heard the legends and. Had to, and has has received the warnings, so he's tried to determine how to fight someone he can't actually look at. Uh, he is he's he's dressed as his token uh, shows. Uh, he he has a uh, knapsack on his uh, hip with his with with, with more of his armor inside of it with a shield across his back. Very good. In the distance, you see land and a walkway elevated along the edge of a mountain on the coast, probably leading around the corner to her entrance, the entrance of her cavern. You make it to the shore and you disembark. Oh, off the off the sea and on dry land. I wish they would have at least provided me with a better boat, but what can you do as I make my way towards the ca cavern? Yes, you make your way up the path and along the elevated kind of plateau edge around the mountain, and suddenly you see a figure covered in full head, head covering, full rags. Uh, it looks Persian, perhaps, and he has a blade. I'll, I'll rest my hand on my uh, on the hilt of my blade. As I find out, hello there, fellow traveler. You are not from this land. Go away, the man says. I'm afraid I can't. I have business, business with the creature in a cave near here. My companions have already entered the cave. They will return with the creature's head and we will have the spoils alone. He pulls his blade from his sheath. It's kind of a curved eastern sword. And he points it at you. You I'm should walk away now. I'm afraid if your companions are as worse as you, they might already be per might, might, might have already perished at the hands of the creature. You even know, creature, you, you are out to languish. It is a snake-headed woman. We will sell her head, and we will gain entrance into heaven ourselves. I could have knit my eyebrows and rubbed my... Uh, or rub my other hand fingers into the uh, crossing, cross the bridge. You are foolish, more foolish than I thought after all. I will not let you pass this point. It's like a 
there's about an immediate distance around him and this ledge that you're walking on, so you're not going to get past him without engaging with him. I'll let drop my sword. Well, if it's kind of it it's be. it's kind of like 300, you know, past terrain, but you guys are like on a very, very, you know, immediate walkway, and it goes all the way down to like kind of a rocky coast. Right. So. He stands there with his sword drawn, kind of crouched a bit in a combat position. I'll, I'll walk to the side. I'll, I'll walk around so that he his back is facing the ocean. Well, if it, well, if you if you're so determined to prevent me from entering the cave, very well. As I went to the side and draw my sword, hoping to save some strength for the fight, but yes, the skin tight is warm up. Ah, enough! He starts running after you. Uh, let's roll initiative. So, that First is... combat of the, uh, campaign. Yes, that is a speed. He is... Yeah, he's... I'd say he's a demanding opponent. He's level three. So you need to make a speed roll for initiative. And you have to Perfect. beat a nine to go before him, basically. So I don't add anything to it, just a straight roll? Yep, no modifiers, for the most part. A 14. Alright, so you go first. So he's running after you. Ah! He's, he's kind of, um, in his stance, he's running straight forward, he's not changing much, and you react first. Here, I, I'll get a little token for him. With my sword, or still straight with my back, with both hands on my sword, I will predict where he's going to be trying to approach from, and kind of step to the side as I swing across, swing in, swing my uh, sword in to him. To damage him, you have to roll a nine. So are you are you pra are you practiced in the the weapon in light weapons or medium weapons or? Yeah, uh, you can practice with light, medium, and heavy weapons. Okay, okay. And so for okay. no penalty when you when using any kind, so any kind of weapon. Okay, so practiced is unmodified. If you become trained in um, light weapons, then you would. Well, hang on, you're attacking with a medium weapon. Yeah, uh, heavy weapon. Heavy weapon. Okay, that's good. Um, light weapons automatically. Ease the difficulty by one because they're quick. If you're trained, it's eased. If you're specialized, it's eased by two. In the future, if you were to become trained in your weapon, it would automatically lower bond. But anyway, you can either use might or speed to do this, and you don't have to apply any effort at all. But all you have to do is roll a nine, so it's up to you. Fourteen again. All right. You do six points of damage. I don't have a Middle Eastern one off, but I can't be picky, so I'm just gonna go with this guy. I'm gonna call him Persian, Persian foe. All right, you do six points of damage to him. How do you, how do you cut him? How does it look? I'll step to the side of him as he runs forward, uh, trying to maneuver to maneuver, maneuver to his side. Ah! As, and as I do so, I will hold my sword up, using his momentum to. Uh, Slash into the sword. Very good. He is extremely bloodied as he's ah, as he's like on his knees while uh down past you a little bit as he uh, went past you on that attack and he comes back up uh, wavering, holding his uh, slightly curved sword at you as it is now his turn as he thrust straight at you. You now need to make a defense roll, which is a speed roll against his level three, which is a target number of nine. So it's probably just a flat roll then? Yeah. All right, he thrusts at you after he's bleeding profusely after you slice him. Six. Unfortunately, you're caught off guard by him still being able to do anything as he thrusts at you. As you take three points of damage to your might pool, and it's, I'm guessing it's something that'll be recovered during a rest. Uh, the recovery rolls I explained. Uh, there's the one action, ten minutes, one hour, ten hours reset, and it's one d6 plus your tier level. But Jai if Jaikor's character is near you, he's got the the plus one on that. So, right. but anyway, back to this. He attacks you, does damage. He, he does three points of damage to you as he uh, cuts you on your on your perfect perfect abs on the side. He slices a bit as he comes back weave, wavering. He's within ten feet of you, just wavering, because uh, you cut him really bad going past you. It's back to you, your turn, on the cliffs here outside Medusa's lair. 
Right. Oh, you actually left. You, you actually might have left a mark there, as I'll kind of walk. I like white sort of blood. Very well. I will kill you. Ah. You notice he's at like the perfect position to kick him off the cliff. Yeah, I'll. And, and that's what I do. I will exactly. I'll, I'll do a, a three hundred move. <laughs> uh, I don't. Th I don't think you will be killing anyone today. As I three hundred him. All right. Are you applying anything? I tell you this, I will give you an asset from him being wounded. So, all you have to do is roll a six as it's lowered to a two. Nice. And you will kick him off to unknown uncertainty. Yeah. Alright, tell me how you 300 kick this uh, Persian guy you've already sliced up. Off. As as he's holding his chest, uh, weakly threatening me with his uh, small sword, I'll kind of smirk, I'll be, I'll kind of ho hold my hands up like, I don't know what, what you're, we're talking about. And as, as I say, I don't think I'll be killing anybody today as I lift my lift my right foot up and kick him square at the uh, wound. Ah, he, the force of the, of the kick sends him off. Ah, you hear a crack against the rocks and a tumble and then Maybe a splash, but the waves are so intense down below. But he has disappeared now. Maybe a little blood washing away on the rocks below. Suddenly, I'll, I'll look, I'll, I'll GM look the intrusion. Do you wish to refuse this intrusion? I guess I could tell you what's going to happen. So, I'm doing a GM intrusion, which would give you two experience points. One for you, and one for you to give to someone, and segue into their thing. Or you could use your experience point to not do it, which would, if we're all being honest, would only prolong your <laughs> your thing here. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll alone, I was just going to say that I'll, I'll, be, I'll be looking over the cliff and say, say, say something like, that, that's, that's turned out a bit more nasty than I thought. And well, as... I'm going to go kill Medusa as I turn toward... To as you're turning, as you're saying that, and as you're turning, you feel a sharp uh, it's sensation, maybe like you've been stabbed in the back. As you, as you're turning, you spin all the way around, and you see a strange individual in armor that makes no sense to you. Fully covered, a strange-looking body, and holding some kind of device. You must come with me. Do not resist. By the gods, what type of magic is this? You will know uh, soon enough. And as he says that, he hits some. He plays with something on his wrist that seems to be glowing and lighting artificially on the cliffside, and suddenly, both of you, zamp! Sword three, I yell as I charge toward him as we vanish. As you're charging, you both vanish. Zamp on the cliffside. Uh, I will give the experience point to, uh, falling, falling to my cores, logic, I'll give to the person on my right. Arcane! That means you get one experience point. Alright. 8 p.m. Sun is down. Flames of the battlefield illuminate everything. Men scream as they die. Men scream as they kill. Amidst the chaos is Oda Nobunaga. He, you have just finished dispatching one of your opponents as you're progressing into the fortified location of your enemies. No, Many young faces nod to you inside their armor as they run forward. Some of them taking arrows and falling dead. Others continuing on. The musketeers. They follow you. One in particular is by your side. A companion of yours. As you uh, approach... A building with a closed door, and you know there are enemies inside. Yes, attack them, everyone. Do you go inside this building with a closed door? Oh, yeah. We go. We charge in. All Taking right. Open the door. You I and your, my... you and your companion, kick open the door. Ah. As there are two enemies inside, you and your companion. Uh, this is a, it's a kind of an isolated building that you guys are going into amidst this battle as everyone else is running around the edges and everything. Do you allow your companion to kick and go in first, or are you the one that goes in first? I will go in first. All right, it's time to roll a speed roll for initiative. If I'm like 
trained in that. What does that mean? So I'm going to say they're level three opponents, both of them. They're demanding. They require your full attention. And they might be able to kill you if you aren't focusing on them. So their target number is nine. They're three. But you are, so for initiative purposes, you're trained in it. So that lowers to a two, meaning you only have to roll a six to go before them. Does, does the edge count for anything? If you wanted to apply uh, a level of effort, that would be from your speed pool. And you're wearing armor, so that would already cost two points. Okay. No, no, no. So all you have to do is roll a six to go before them, and your companion will go with you, and he'll be using the help actions. So boom, you bust through the door. Your companion is there with you, both with your katana-type blades or whatever you're using. You can describe that to me if you want. Oh, and yes. I Right now I have the spear in both hands. Oh, shit. You come in with the spear taking up most of the room. Your companion... I around my head, and then thrust it into his chest hopefully okay so let, let him help you real quick with a cooperative action he is going to he's he's just going to help you so he's in there with his um, pole arm type weapon as well as you guys are taking up the room they've got like little blades or whatever so he's helping you with the attack so you're already follow my lead I was waiting bro. instead of a 9 you have to hit a 6 because he's helping you uh, gang up on the on the one so just tell me left or right one, and then make your roll. I go left. Wait a All right. Only got to roll, roll a six. And if you roll a Three. seven, if you roll a seventeen or a higher, you get bonus damage too. So let's keep this in mind. Nice. All right. Very, very good. So tell me how you stab him with your pole arm, and um, is it a medium or heavy weapon? It's a pole arm, so two hands. I heavy weapon, I imagine. All right, yeah. so um, six points of damage. So with that, you fucking bloody him real bad. And tell me what that is looking like. Um, yeah. I just thrust into him hard, <laughs> pinning him to the ball. No, he hides as he knows a while. Um, is that it? Do I get... What, what can I do on my turn? Is it you action? only you only have one action and you attack so you can move an immediate distance so do you keep your positioning in the doorway do you move further into the room sure the room is only like it's only like yeah. a short distance anyone within the immediate immediate, immediate yeah well, I'm just gonna stay here all right this uh and your, your companion is up right next to you the one who's wounded he is uh he's pinned against well, not not specifically. As he uh, breaks some cloth in his shirt as he manages to charge at you. The other one charges at your companion. They both have smaller <coughs> blades. You need to make a speed defense roll. And it's gonna it's gonna be a... Uh, you have to beat a nine unless you have something to... An asset or anything. Mm, speed defense. No, I mean, yeah, we will roll the defense. You block with your polearm as he comes in with his smaller blade. Roll again for your companion. Actually, hang on. Your companion is probably four, so. He attacks your companion, but he is unable to damage him because he is not of a decent level. Back to you. They've engaged right up in your face, trying to stop you from using your really long pokey motions. I do it again. Alright, how do you kill this one? I pull, you know, I flip the spear around and I it makes a big circle and then it just slices his throat. The blood splatters over you, your companion, and the other one. As he drops dead in the Japanese building you're in, the other one looks concerned. You should be. Your companion here. I guess he can attack if you want to roll for him. Sure. Take him down. Oh, shit. An 18. Nice. That does an additional plus two damage. And he's running four, so four. Six points of damage. Let the spirit of Bushido flow. He slices this guy, bloodying him as he drops to his knees. He then runs away into the battlefield, stumbling out the, the door, putting a bloody handprint on the doorframe as he disappears into the battle. Your companion is running forward to chase, and as you move up, GM intrusion. 
You suddenly feel a piercing sensation in the back of your neck as you see your companion freeze up and fall over. Oh, uh, Nani? Nani? As you spin around, you see uh-huh. a foreigner in foreign armor. Translated through an artificial voice through the helmet. It, it speaks to you in perfect Japanese as you understand it. I'm sorry for this. It will be explained, but you must come with me. Nice. Do you get an X? Do All right. I get so, one? yeah. you As uh, as he says that, you feel, you feel a tingle in the back of your neck where the assertion site was, and you both disappear. Um, yes, you get an- another XP, and you get to hand it off to, presumably, Law. So I have two XP? Yes. How did I get the first one? From oh, Crimson gave it to you. From Crimson, so... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Jaikor went, he got XP Good from law. the intrusion, and then gave it to Crimson, and then he went, gave it to you, you went, and gave it to... Well, Law. That would be next. I refuse your intrusion. <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> the story stops here then. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we're going home then. 3 a.m. Friday, November 9th, 1888. Whitechapel, East End of London. It's a busy and chaotic night with people from all walks of life going about their business in the dark and narrow streets of the district. Jack the Ripper is leaving the room of his fifth victim mutilated to an almost unrecognizable extent. Law, tell us what your character looks like as you're shutting the door of the apartment building and walking out onto these streets. What looks like a noble gentleman dressed in a top hat, a leather coat, a black leather coat, a vest under the side coat, and a monocle carrying a cane just walking out of the building down the steps. As you walk out, you see a few passed out drunkards in their black torn clothes, like the big black coats and torn socks, etc. Perhaps a somewhat empty bottle by their sides. In the distance, you see a few more vic- potential victims, prostitutes, still trying to work at this late hour. Coming the other way, two patrolmen, the lolly, the bobby, whatever they're called, with their twirling nightsticks they talk to each other sticking their chests out looking for murderers like you i will see them and slowly almost slinking into the shadows of a back alley a, roll s- a stealth roll which we can i will allow you to use either intellect or speed and that's not really going to matter unless you're using effort um I'll say it's it's pretty standard for you, so I'd say you need to at least roll a six without them. He's trained in it, I think. Yeah. You're trained in it, so all right. So what would be a standard stealth is now a simple stealth for you. You only need to roll a three, and they would have not even noticed you as you slink into the alley. Fourteen. You slink into total darkness in the alley of Whitechapel of the district as the two bobbies walk by twirling one of them twirling their nightstick the other on their shoulder oh yes it was a it's a it's a nasty night as any other all these lowdowns no good for nothing as their voices trail off stupid cops as he'll slink back out from the shadows and begin walking towards some more potential victims cane clacking against the stone sidewalk (laughs) that's so fucking ominous Clink. And you do so. You see a a, uh, a woman, a damsel, up against a light post. She has her head down, hair loosely hanging. I'll bend over and pull off my top hat. Good evening, ma'am. Seems that you need a room to stay in tonight. May I offer one? As I'll reach out my hand. She looks about halfway going for it and about halfway rejecting it. So go ahead and make an uh, intellect roll. And uh, let's see. I'm going to say it's difficult for her. So do you have anything to... Are you trained in a skill or... Deceiving. You're trained in deceiving. I am. Okay. 
We'll, we'll do that. So instead of difficult, it'll be demanding. So you need to roll a nine at least. All right. Fourteen. <laughs> she looks around in the cold darkness of Whitechapel. She takes your hand and she begins walking with you. It's not long before she freezes up on you and just falls over to the side as a GM intrusion. Oh, well. You look and see that the woman, your potential victim, has fallen over, fallen over and she seems to be in a kind of like a stasis, perhaps shivering a little bit. You know it wasn't you that did it. Do you look around? I do. I look towards the alleys. I look around myself. As you look into the alleys, you see perhaps some kind of armor, a black humanoid figure, strange, unusual. Suddenly, you see a projectile of some sorts as you feel a piercing sensation on your gut. As you're looking down, you hear an artificially transmitted through this helmet voice say, Stop what you're doing. You must come with us. Any last words before you're teleported? How dare you stop me from having no. a night on the table? <laughs> classy. Very classy. The woman still dies from head bashing to the system. Right. Back in the year 2460. Vlaum. 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 You all come in to the most strange and exotic thing you've ever seen. What, I, you've, you've all seen caves, but there's so much metal in this cave it doesn't make sense. What you just came through doesn't make sense. Your stomachs are uneasy. You may have the slight sensation to vomit. As you're not sure what's going on, you see tall things of metal, lights whizzing, whirring. The not one, but three more of the figures that grabbed you, walking past you and around you up to a platform behind what appears to be some kind of woman with a strange look on her face. Strange armor, strange devices all around, behind you, a massive swirling vortex of light and energy, twitching like electricity, but completely covered in a, a portal of energy. The woman says, please stabilize yourselves. Are you all stable? Ah, you seem to all be, uh, you seem to all be in order. There's a reason we've brought you here. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it, you're the only ones that the computers here says can help us. I was in the middle of a quest for, to scare my, to save my people. Tell me what you have brought me here for. This is a far, so this is a far greater quest, young Perseus. But it's, 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 it's for another people, is, is it not? It's, it's all, it's the same type of quest in the end. Save your people, save your people. It's What's the same thing speaking? with you. It sounds like... I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps I should explain the situation. This device behind you, she points to it as you may or may not look. You see six indentations uh, evenly spaced along the arc. Look, looks like they're big enough to fit some kind of gem or stone. We found the uh, the people of, of this time they found this device. It is from an ancient civilization. And we, the Horizon Initiative, she points to the uh, other black spacesuit people that brought you and herself. We are skilled enough to work with these devices. Uh, unfortunately, the Federation scientists that were working with it before us activated it and caused the stones to disappear. These stones appear to be integral into the in fabric of the universe in what is known as the time-space continuum. I am able to track this frequency of these stones and I am able to send you back to recover them. Will you accept this quest? All of humanity and the future of humanity and the past of humanity depends upon you. <laughs> and we must act as, as she says that and you're all kind of debating that still thrown off by oh I'm teleported into the future what the fuck is going on everything shakes and some dust falls as some more red lights come on the scanners and screens these large machines that you see towards the entrance move a bit as their as their arms with their what's whatever it is their massive metal arms are pointed at this door as everything shakes one of the 
agents that's brought to you speaks up behind its helmet. Shh. We have to hurry. The Federation is breaching the building. Shh. Please. Time is of the essence. I can send you back in time and you will have... Oh, quickly. Get them the get them the wrist devices and let them choose. Go, go, go. These, uh, these agents come up to you. Each of you. And they apply a wrist device. So, something like what the Predator would have, but maybe a little more compact. And uh, it kind of latches around and locks on the underside of your wrist. And it lights up and it has a digital time countdown and a few other buttons. I'd have to remove my braces first as this one approaches me. And then look at my wrists, already having attachments on my wrists. Yeah, he, uh, he says through his helmet, you can either put those in your... And your pouch, or we can hold on to them for you, but I must put this on. Oh, very well. I'll uh, unstrap my bracer as I add stash, stash it into my knapsack. And we'll, do, and we'll put our own timelines. So if if we do go along with this whole timelines, Momo Jumbo, if, would you be able to send us back to the point before we disappear? If my calculations are correct and the time stones are reunited with the device. Everything will go back to uh, it as normal. And I will either allow you to stay here in the future with us, or return to your timelines with uh, your memories wiped, of course. I must go back. My, my, my family and people are in, are in danger. Very good. I suppose I should mention this one thing. You all felt the sensation before you, my agents teleported you here. That was a nano device that is now embedded into your central nervous system. And if there's any funny business, we will be able to shut you down. But it's also how we're able to track you through the time-space continuum, so it's a give, and, give or take. I uh, have good feelings about the three of you, but one of you I'm not so certain, so... But, now... You're talking about this weird long-haired fellow. The silent Japanese one, who hasn't said a word... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, yeah. none of us would be able to understand what Perseus is saying. <laughs> or Oda. Oh, that, is, that is true, because I would be speaking uh, old tongue. Old ancient oh, Greek. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd be speaking ancient Greek. Oh, I just assume that everybody still speaks ancient Greek. <laughs> well, you might know any difference to you, it's just your language. Well, I must exactly. get back to the clan and win the battle. Why the hell did you take me out of my timeline? Uh, I have a question. For, what, what are you? What are you saying? Why are we here? Hey, I have. I, I have. I have. I not explained it. But here, here the base, I'm sorry. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, something yes. About the, the time stone. There was. There was something in your file about your attention span due to drug use. All right. Now, uh, the six. The six st stones are missing. You know, you have six options. I can track them through the time space continuum. But it'll be up to you to choose where you go first. You just have to bring all six of them back. Here are your options. Uh, the one that we call the Time Stone is in uh, Saturday, March 13th, 1943, in the Czech Republic. Um, no. this Czech Republic. Right. And, 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 and y'all too, speak proper. Speak properly. I can't understand what you're saying. As you talk to uh, Johnny, he'll slowly start saying, so, or speak back to you in ancient Greek. Oda's, yes, no, but no, yeah. yes, yes, he's like, I have never heard of this country, must be where is, where is this, uh, Czech Republic? Is it near Athens? This is like playing Crash Bandicoot or something. We have all the levels just right here <laughs> at the beginning of the game. Or like Gauntlet or whatever, you know? So when you go to 19-something and get stoned, okay? There is also, there are, there's still, there are still five more stones to recover. I, I'm sorry, I'm going as quickly as I can. Hold the defenses, she looks back to the agents. As, uh, oh, 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 yeah, is, is Ronnie still speaking in uh, ancient Greek? Right. You can all, uh, you can all understand them, maybe because of the neuro devices, the nanobot oh, devices in you. Oh, yeah, but if, it's if it's you guys can, yeah. if you guys can understand each other, that's another thing. <laughs> For for now, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, yeah. If if if, if Trey says get, if getting stoned in Czech Republic, uh, in in the in Greek, uh, Perseus will reply back to you. Oh no, you don't want to get stoned. That, that's that's painful. The second, yeah, more, more than likely you would die. The that's what we do for our bo for our body. The second stone we've tracked it. September first, thirteen ninety four, Paris, France. It's the dark stone. Dark stone. 
bring the dark stone. Oh, 13. I didn't know anything about that year, man. <laughs> 1394. Oh my god. All right. The, the third stone. I'm sorry. I must move quickly. We do not have time. December 9th, 1781. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In the 13 colonies, I suppose. It's the fire stone. The fourth stone is the life stone. 2,301,034 years before the common era. Somewhere in Central Africa. Oh, great, man. I was wanting to go to Africa. The fifth stone is the mind stone. Somewhere in the future. 3768. Your future? Our future? Everyone's future. And the, the computer says it's on the planet Mizor 5. The planet? Oh, man. I knew the spacemen were going to make it somewhere, but oh. I suppose I should tell you that we're not on what you know as Earth now. We are on. How do you mean we're not on Earth? We are in another solar system, a planet. planet we are on is HD 85512B, known now as Aurora Dawn. But that is a constant. There is one more stone. We're getting sidetracked. The final stone is the tidal stone, 7463 before the Common Era, in what you may know, Perseus, as Atlantis. I've heard that some of my ancestors are from Atlantis. If you have any questions, ask them now, because you must make up your decision so I can program the portal to send you back to one of the six time zones. There will be a countdown on your wrist device. Once that timer goes out, you will automatically be sent back here. There is another button you can press that will send you back if you need to come earlier. You will have a limited amount of time in each of the time zones. And I offer you all one of the two ciphers. What is this cipher that you speak of? What are these places that you mentioned? I have never heard of things such as the Czech Republic or Paris. She she shows a, a big hologram comes up, a big holographic map of the entire world, and it shows this is where you are born, this is where you're going, and it's, it's very informative and mind-blowing as it's just projected right in front of all of you. Oh yeah, especially for purchase case. It's magic, oh, sorcery, what is this? Yeah. How does it know all this? Is it even real? Especially for um, Johnny, has, still has, tripping. Has society, has society <laughs> turned into? Has society been overrun by sword, by spellcasters and witches? How are you able to conjure up such imagery? She says that I can I can offer each of you one upgrade to your wrist devices. You can only choose one of these two, and these this is a uh, these are ciphers. So you have to choose as a group, yep. or do we get? Yeah, uh, you get them individually. You can choose one okay. of these two. Um, so these are. Uh, for terms of understanding what they are on your person, they're just uh, an attachment for your wrist device that they gave you. That is, uh, that'll go away once used. It's like an upgrade. So each of y whichever one you guys choose, you can roll a d6 and determine its level. So there's time dilation defensive and time dilation offensive. I choose a uh, offensive one. Johnny will take the defensive one. And then that leaves Jack and Oda. Uh, which one are you taking, the defensive or the offensive one? Offensive. I can't Level. understand what Otis said, but I, uh, I respect his, uh, him as a fellow and warrior. I to give him a nod. I will take the defensive. During this past, like, ten minutes of time, uh, Percy says whole world has been flipped upside down. Those of you with the defense, the <clears throat> wrist upgrade, the cipher that you got makes you move around rapidly, and it makes your defense rolls eased by two. Let's look at offense, and that's just the opposite. Eases by two. So, Oda, with this spear or whatever weapon with the fucking enhanced time device, defense, so that makes sense. Makes sense for Johnny. All right, before we end the session, session zero, do you guys have a... She's asking you to pick. She's asking you to choose very quickly. You need to go now. Which one of the six time zones shall, shall she program you to go to first? I say the first one. <laughs> I say we go to Paris. Heard it's a delight to kill at night there. I say, I say Atlantis. See what my ancestors were raving so much about back when they were alive. If, you, if none of you pick, I'll have to set it on a random sequence. Set it on the random sequence. Are we all fully trying to understand what we're saying, by the way? No. <laughs> uh, so so only me and, only me and uh, Johnny can understand each other since... Johnny, Johnny and Jack, they're speaking English. Well, uh, jo Johnny said that he was starting to speak uh, ancient, ancient Greek since he was listening to me. 
Ah. But he doesn't know he's doing it. He just does it naturally. He's picking <laughs> up on it. Is the random sequence your final answer? She says. I don't know. No. I don't know what they're saying. What are they? What? What, did, what do they speak of? Oda wants things. to do a random sequence. Uh, Jack wants to go to Paris. Johnny wants to do the first one. And you want to go to Atlantis. You're all split. Yes. We're going to have to make the uh, decision for you. I do have a question. How are we supposed to work with each other if we can't understand each other? One moment. <laughs> Try now. You, you, need all, to understand, man. you all feel a tingle in your skulls. You can now understand each other. Uh, switch it back. They sound annoying. <laughs> they, she adjusts it for Jack. That's the last favor I'm doing. Make up your damn minds now. <laughs> Take us randomly. First one. Very well. All right, she does the random sequence, but I'm going to let you guys roll because the GM does not roll in the cipher system. Someone roll a D6. I got it. Oh, uh, it was destined. <laughs> All right, when we start next Saturday, we'll be going to 1943, the Czech Republic for the time stone. As you all, zoom. Well, who goes Who goes in first? What's your order? Not Jack. I guess I would have gone first. Johnny would be behind you. Yeah. Perseus, Johnny, Oda, then Jack. The agents are, as, they, as you all walk in, the agents walk forward and look on with awe as they look down at the consoles. To... By the way, before we went in, Perseus would have put on his uh, breastplate. Very good. They allow it, it, that. It, it just perfectly to look uh, just like a bronze version of they that. as you're putting it on body. as they as you're putting it on and you're all walking through they they hurry you on as rubble falls from the cavern floor things are shaking lights are going off the machines are acting weird at the gates and we will resume with session one <laughs> what do you guys think so far yeah I like it it's interesting same yeah. I need to get going home, though. It's different, but I think once you <laughs> get used to the uh, lowering the yeah, difficulty and understanding and stuff, the yeah. ups and downs. Yeah. But all right, I'll yeah. see also you make guys. Also, sure save your uh, PDFs so yeah. that it doesn't... Uh... Yeah, make sure you're saving your character sheets, for sure, <laughs> with all your XP really? and everything. The intrusions are funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure this... You will... shot, you got I'm sure this will get good, for sure. All right, you guys take oh. care. I'll see you all next yeah, week. Yeah, you too. See you. Later. Later.